congratulations. Your pet now gets to move on to the next phase of their procedure, uh, home rehab. At the time that you had your recheck appointment with us or at the predetermined time based on the procedure, uh, we would have given you the rehab protocol. So um, this is kind of what we're going to go through today. Um, each rehab protocol is uh, tailored to a specific procedure. So follow the instructions on the handout that we gave you. Uh, if you read through it, it outlines everything pretty detailed and it will tell you, you know, how long you need to take your pet for a walk, um, the types of exercises that we're going to have you do, etc. Um, but what we're going to cover today is going to be how to do some of those therapeutic exercises. The um, activity increase, and I'm just going to flip to the quick reference section of your handout. Um, on the, uh, it would be your left hand side, my right hand side. Um, it is going to give you the time frame in terms of distances for walking and when you should walk them, those particular um, distances. So it's just going to be a gradual increase in activity, and that is helping us to build up stamina, build muscle, etc. On the opposite side, we have a list of what we call therapeutic exercises. And those exercises are designed for more of the fine-tuning things, um, the balance, the range of motion, um, being able to move in a variety of different directions. So those are geared towards that. And when you get down towards the, the end of your rehab protocol, you're going to see there's a ton of things listed there. Don't feel like you have to do every exercise every day. Uh, we realize that sometimes because of where you live or because of how your pet is trained or even just you know how your pet is cooperative about things, there might be some of the activities that are just very difficult for you to do or sometimes impossible for you to do. And so do the best you can. Uh, we recommend that you do the therapeutic exercises um, whenever you're going for your walks or two to three times a day and uh, do what you can. If there are the only couple exercises they can do, just do those exercises. If they're willing to do all of them, you know, rotate through so people aren't getting bored, um, so your pet's not getting bored. So if you have any questions about any of the exercises, need a demonstration, you know, keep watching this video. Uh, we've got my little friend, Rhea, who's gonna help me demonstrate some of the activities in just a moment. Uh, but always feel free to call the clinic. Um, we're happy to help out and answer any questions that you have. Uh, we'll also go through some of the information in terms of what we want you to do prior to the workout. Um, some quick massage just to kind of get the blood flowing because um, we know that blood provides nutrients which helps to rehab things a lot better. And uh, we'll also have you doing some stretching exercises with your pet which Rhea and I will demonstrate in just a little bit. So keep watching. Alright, so this is Rhea. This is my friend who's going to be helping us demonstrate our um, rehab work today. Um, she is great at a lot of these activities. Um, some of them she needs a little work on. So um, just follow along and bear with us. Um, but she's going to be our demo dog and the first thing we want to start out with is before we do our walks or do our activity, we want to do a couple little um, pre-workout things. So the first thing we want to do is whatever leg it was that your pet had surgery, is we want to do just a quick brisk massage for just a, a minute or so. And you basically are just going to pretend like you're petting them very vigorously. Yes, just get that leg nice and worked out. Or if you're doing a front leg, we just kind of want to get this whole quarter panel here nice and uh, rubbed out. And we're not working on muscles or anything like that. We basically just want to stimulate that blood flow. Because um, blood flow is going to deliver nutrients to the muscles and it's just going to make the workout much better for them. So just a quick little rub down before we do our activities. And then we're also going to do some cookie stretches. Um, and with these you're going to use your high value treats. And Miss Rhea, can we come and show them a little bit better? Alright, so we want to use our treat. We want them to be very focused on it. And so we're just going to offer it to them but not give it to them. And we're just going to bring their nose down towards their belly button and just kind of stretch out that trunk there. And then back up and then come on up. There we go. Then we're gonna bring that nose over towards their hip. And then we're gonna bring that nose over towards their hip again. All right, and then you can have your treat. And we're gonna do, you know, six to eight reps of those. Um, it just kind of helps stretch out those trunk muscles um, so that we don't overextend ourselves or anything. If your pet has a very short attention span, and you can't quite get all four of those movements done with one treat, you can give them little treats um, as they do each component of things. So um, just a little stretch out before we go for our walks and do our exercises. Just makes things a little bit easier on their body so we don't cause any other problem. So you want to make sure you have a high value treat that they are going to enjoy and want to work for. Um, so what I would recommend is getting a treat that you only use for their rehab exercises. They don't get it for any other reason. That way they look forward to it 
And if they're having a good time and you're having a good time, it makes it seem like it's less of an exercise and it's more fun. So Miss Rhea really enjoys these treats. Um, and a lot of times we'll worry about giving them things that you know are high in calories, whatever. Um, you can use those high value treats even if they are a little bit higher in caloric content. Just don't give them the whole thing. You know, she just got a little tiny, tiny piece and she's happy with that. So, all right, Miss Rhea, you ready? So sit to stand exercises are one of the first ones that people are gonna do. Um, she does these pretty easy because she regularly just sits for her um, treats. But we, the hardest part is gonna be trying to get her to stand up. So come on up, come on, Rhea. Here. Okay, now sit. Good girl. All right, come on, Rhea. Come here. Come here. Come on. No, come on up. Come on up. And if they just kind of scooch forward, the other thing that you can do is just kind of go behind them and use the treat. You want this? You gotta get up to come get it. You gotta get up to come get it. Come on. Are you gonna come now? You're not gonna do it. Yeah. Come on up. Um, one thing you can do also is you can assist them. So um, just hide a little tiny piece of the treat in your hand and then you just kind of stick your hand under there and then sit, raise it. There you go. And then we're gonna repeat. Okay, I've got your treat in there. Come on up, now sit. Good girl. So there's all different ways that we can adapt um, depending on what we need them to do. Uh, when you're doing any type of uh, an exercise like that, um, where there are repetitions, we typically want people to do six to eight repetitions in a row. Um, if we're doing something where it's like a, a longer activity, we typically will do it for three to five minutes, sometimes a little bit longer. So um, the next activity we'll have people do is called backwards walking. This one can be very difficult for dogs that are trained to sit for their treats, um, just because that's what they're trained to do and they really want that treat so sometimes they, they just sit down instead of trying to walk backwards so whatever you can do to help um, that happen if for some reason there's an activity your pet just can't seem to get or doesn't enjoy it it's more of a chore just skip and do something else okay so don't ever force it um, so this one is one that Raya does have a harder time with um, yes I know you're being very patient for your treat so we're gonna get a little more creative with it so we've got a couple little treats here so we're gonna do our thing where we say here's your treat we stand up okay and then we're gonna back up come on back up back up come on walk backwards come on and if you go in front of them and you just kind of back and in, walk into them a little bit and see she's gonna sit down that one is a more difficult one um dogs that tend to stand more if you just walk towards them with the treat they'll just back up. Um, some people actually have a backup command for their dogs. I know a lot of people do. Um, go ahead and use that. Um, this is one that is probably more difficult for her to do just because of how well she's trained. Um, so I probably wouldn't work too hard on doing the backwards walk if I was doing her rehab. Um, I'd you know, focus more on some of the other activities. So if we're doing that, you can have a little tiny snip. Yeah. All right. So again, um, like I showed you before, we're following along on our rehab list. So um, the backwards walk is gonna be one. Um, I'm not gonna show you how to do an incline walk because that one is pretty self-explanatory. Um, just find something with a slope, whether it's a wheelchair ramp at a business near your house or whether you have a hill that you can walk up and down. If you live out in the country and you have a mountain system that you can walk up and down, that's a great option too. We just want something that's a little bit of an incline and you're just gonna walk up and down the incline, um, usually for three to five minutes. So that one we're not gonna demonstrate. That means less treats for you, but you've got plenty coming up. And then the one that we're gonna do next is called the figure eight walk. And this one, you don't get as many treats for, um, but we are gonna use a leash and you know just the regular leash is fine. I'm just gonna use this quick release slip collar. And so basically we're just gonna walk in a wide figure eight pattern. And you can do this as you're walking outside, as you go for a, a regular walk, um, et cetera. The main thing to remember is you want to do a really wide figure eight pattern. We don't wanna turn quickly and torque the knee um, or the front leg or whatever it is that we're rehabbing, okay? So you ready to walk for a little bit? All right, come on, Ms. Ria. Ria. So just keep them um, on a short leash right next to you. And again, you're just gonna walk in a figure eight pattern where we just kind of gently curve just gently curve, yes, there's a little girl. And then we curve again. Yep, I know this is very weird. You're doing good. Yes, I know that's where the treats are, but we're gonna walk past that for just a minute. We're gonna do one more curve. Yep, one more turn. Keep going, I know you're I'm trying to get treats from the camera. Yeah, all right, there 
Let me pull just a nice gentle curve and then you can come over and have a cookie. Yes. All right, good job. So, you know, just real slow. We're not trying to get them to twist and turn or anything like that. It's just gonna be a real gentle um, turn for them. So then the next one, um, kind of a similar one to that, is something called a curve walk. Um, we're not gonna be able to demonstrate that one either because we don't have a curb here in the clinic. Um, but if you do live in the city or have access to a curb that she can walk along, what you're gonna do is walk with the leg that had surgery next to the curb and then just go up and down off the curb, almost like you're doing an S walk, um, just like you're kind of like a snake. Um, what you want is for that leg that had surgery to have to lift up and then pull that weight onto the curb. Um, just helps with the range of motion and some of that muscle um, and also balance. So um, curb walks are a great one. Again, if you don't have a curb you can do that with or your pet is just like, what the heck are you doing? Um, and doesn't want to do it, just move on to something else, okay? Miss Rhea, I'm gonna borrow you again. Okay, are you ready? I know, we're just gonna set this down. All right, so this is the one um, that people are kind of a little like, well, that one seems kind of weird. Um, but this one's actually pretty easy. We're gonna do something called three-legged standing. And this one, sorry, you don't get a lot of treats for this one either. But come on over here, yep, thank you. And you can have a little snack. So three-legged standing, what we do is we want them in a standing position. And so come on up. And you're basically just gonna take one of their legs and you're gonna hold it up off the ground for 30 to 60 seconds. And ideally we wanna do it without supporting their weight in any way. Um, and you can hold up to the side, you can tuck it under them, you can pull it up back, whatever's comfortable. Uh, but you basically want them to have to stand on three legs in balance. This is a great balance activity. And so you're gonna hold up the leg for 30 to 60 seconds. Then you're gonna go to another leg and you're gonna hold that one up for 30 to 60 seconds. And again, you don't want them leaning on you or anything like that. We want them doing all the work. And then we're just gonna shift and do the next leg. Yeah, this is weird, isn't it? I know, I'm kind of crazy today. And then we're gonna do the final leg and you know, just work your way around. Um, and this one we're gonna do you know, for three to five minutes. So just keep working through the legs um, during that time period. And that is gonna, like I said, work on balance. Um, we're gonna do one in a little bit called two-legged standing, which I know seems a little bit more crazy, um, but it can be done. <laughs> and actually, that was perfect because we're gonna dance next. Yeah, we get to dance, are you ready? So dancing might be one of the activities in your rehab protocol. Again, everybody's protocol is geared towards what procedure their pet had done. So follow your specific handle. All right, come on up, come on way up. So dancing, we literally want your pet to be up on the back legs and we're gonna go in a box step. So backwards and we're gonna go to the side. Come on over, come on over. I know this is weird, good girl. And then we're gonna go forward or backwards and then we're gonna go to the other side. Come on over. I know the side ones are weird, aren't they? Aren't they? Come on over. And then just kind of shift with them backwards. Just make a big box. Come on over. Come on. Come on. Are you being lazy? Come on. Scooch over. There we go. And then this way. Good girl. Okay, we're going to scooch this way. Come on over. That's one. And then you get to have a snack. Come on. There you go. Good girl. Good job. All right. And you can have a little snack. And so that is dancing. And then the last one we have, like I was saying, is that three-legged standing, or the two-legged standing. So very similar to three-legged standing. Um, the only difference is we're adding a leg. Main thing to remember is when you're doing two-legged standing, you always want to um, hold up legs cross-body. So um, left, front, and right, rear, and vice versa. Don't hold up two legs on the same side because they can't really balance that well and they're just gonna fall over, um, which is not a great thing. It might be kind of funny, but we don't want them to get hurt. So um, when we do two-legged standing, we're gonna start with one leg, and then we're gonna add the other leg in. Come on up, here we go. And again, we're gonna hold for 30 to 60 seconds, and we want them to do all the work so they're not leaning against us or anything. And you can see she's having to work a little bit to keep that balance. And uh, once we get one set done, then we're gonna switch to the other legs. Come on up, baby girl. There you go, good job. And again, just kind of, I mean, they're gonna wobble and wave a little bit, but we don't want them to fall over, but just kind of hang on to those legs for 30 to 60 seconds and just keep shifting back and forth. And that's gonna help with a lot of their balance. 